I want to jump right in here. Okay. Stephen asks, Stephen from Florida, is there any research to show the effect of Delta variant of COVID-19 on vaccinated elderly people in nursing homes or adult living facilities? Uh, well, Stephen, thank you for that. This is a really important question because nursing homes are often the sort of forerunner of what happens in the rest of the country. We saw that last spring. Pay attention to nursing homes now. So let me show you a little bit of what's happening in nursing homes. We've been putting this together. So just in terms of vaccinations, nursing home residents, they're among the highest vaccinated population in the country, 82%. Staff, closer to 59%. Pay attention to that. The country as a whole, 50%. Let's look at what happened over the last month, end of June to end of July. Country grew about 4.4 times. What happened in nursing homes? 3.6 times. Kind of makes sense, right? They're growing slower. They have a much higher vaccinated population. But not all nursing homes are the same, and this is where it gets important. If you find nursing homes where you actually had higher vaccination rates, they tended to grow slower, that 3.6 times. But in nursing homes where the staff vaccination fell below 50%, more in line with the rest of the country, then it was 5.2 times faster. So the growth was actually faster in those nursing homes than the rest of the country. Okay? If you look at specific states, if we can show that state map again, you go to Mississippi, nursing homes grew 18-fold uh, faster compared to 4.4 for the country. Mississippi, 8.4 times faster. So we, we got to really pay attention to nursing homes. What's happening in nursing homes will, will give an indication of what's happening in the rest of the country. What happens inside the nursing homes and then all around those nursing homes That's in right. that area right there. All right, this question comes from Jamie in San Diego. I'm going to read this. Hopefully you understand what he's asking here. What should be the message from the CDC and the NIH to counties with both high vaccination rate and high COVID transmission rate? For example, I live in San Diego. Uh, although over 71% of the population is vaccinated, our transmission rate in COVID cases are high. Yeah, so th this is an interesting point. People often say, okay, we got enough vaccine out there. Why, what else do we need to do? There's two problems. One is that you want to vaccinate people. The second is you want to make sure people aren't constantly being bathed in virus. It's pretty simple. I mean, you know, somebody said to me, if the country as a whole wore high filtration masks, KN95 or N95 masks for three weeks, we could probably bring viral transmission down to containment. Three weeks, the country, if they did that. And that applies to San Diego. So we can see what's happening in San Diego County. First of all, you're right. Uh, it's around 69% have received at least one dose, 60% fully vaccinated. But San Diego does something really interesting where they bifurcate who is where the case rates are falling between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. I mean, the numbers tell the story. Yes, I mean, there's no ambiguity amazing. in that graphic. They're, they're, the, the, we know who is becoming infected right now in San Diego. But the message, at least for the next few weeks, until the viral transmission rates come down, if you live in a place with high transmission, wear masks indoors. I'm so glad that you have that graph because the COVID infections, if they're breakthrough, they're not the same as other infections when you look at the risk of death, right? So you really want to break out those numbers uh, to see that. Uh, and speaking of, someone who would not be included necessarily in that, in that a white part of the graph. Jim asks, why should someone who has already had COVID-19 get vaccinated? Doesn't he or she already have antibodies? Uh, Jim, uh, this is probably one of the most common questions I get. And the answer is yes, you do have antibodies and you probably also have these cells that are called T cells. Uh, There's another part of your immune system. That is true. And there's even been uh, throughout history examples where people who are naturally infected had even stronger immunity than what a vaccine could provide. That's not the case here. And that's just because we have the data now. In fact, there was a study last Friday showing those who were vaccinated were half as likely to become reinfected as those who weren't. Again, we, we didn't know this for certain at the beginning, but these vaccines are really good. There's more variants coming. What they're finding is the vaccines are more durable, lasting longer, and they're broader offering broader protection against the variants as well. You know, people have had COVID, the data is clear here. They can have their cake and eat it too. Get the vaccine and they're wicked protected, as that's they right. would say in Boston. Yeah, I right. mean, it's a really high level of protection. Go get the vaccine. You're better off. Um, this is from Carlos. I'm fully vaccinated and I'm exposed to somebody who got COVID. What should I do and do I have to quarantine? Well, first of all, Carlos, you're vaccinated. So that's the really good news. Uh, and, the, and the recommendations are going to be pretty simple. If you've been vaccinated, you have this exposure, you do not need to quarantine. Uh, they do say you should get tested now. Remember, they said if you don't have symptoms in the past, you don't need to get tested. Now they're saying even if you're vaccinated and have had an exposure, you should get tested three to five days after. 
wear a mask indoors uh, until, you're, until 10 days. If you have symptoms, obviously isolate, get tested, all the things you would normally do. Keep in mind, look, if you have symptoms, no matter what, stay home. I mean, you don't know if it's the flu, if it's COVID, the RSV, there's all these things circulating. If you're symptomatic, that advice is clear. This is, this is for people who don't have symptoms. If you've been exposed, you don't have symptoms, you are vaccinated, so you don't need to quarantine, but what if you have children? What if you have children? Well, small children. Small, small children. Well, asking you, for a friend. Yes, asking, asking for a friend. For myself. <laughs> you've had the exposure. If, if you, if you uh, have symptoms, obviously, you isolate within the home. If you don't have any symptoms, get tested. And if you, if you have the virus, then you may want to wear a mask or something like that or stay away from the kids. But if not, I think you're okay. In the interim, then, as you were waiting to be tested after exposure, that's the, that's the tricky part, right? Yeah, if, if you really are worried about it, I mean, I, I think that if you're vaccinated, the, the risk is really quite low. I mean, is it zero? No, but it's quite low. I, I, I don't know what, what specifically, you know, you would do differently, but I think during that, I would definitely get tested. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Dr. Sanjay, even better in person. Yeah, I, I have do to it more say. Often. Let's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring it on. Thanks so much, Sanjay. You got it.